Dow Watch episode 12. In this episode, we go through the usual suspects, Dash, Pivex and Evmos. And the special guest DAO is a DAO which I'm actually an advisor on and I like very much, which is called, you thought I forgot the name, Metabrands, metabrands.io. So stick with us and we're going to go on a wild and wonderful ride through some of the most outrageous proposals you're going to see on YouTube. Enjoy. Hello and welcome to Dow Watch. I am your charismatic host, Cryptosi, and this is episode number 12. All right, so let's get into it. The um, the guest DAO for this episode, episode number 12, the guest DAO is Metabrands, metabrands.io. The reason why I chose this guest DAO is because I'm actually an advisor to this DAO. Um, I haven't really been doing enough advising, to be fair, but, you know... They put my name on the box and so they uh, sold loads of copies because I'm basically the Kylian Mbappe of crypto. All right, all jokes aside, um, let's look in Metabrand's pockets before we get into the usual stuff. This episode, we've got Dash, Pivex, Evmos and Metabrands. So let's look at the Metabrands um, portfolio, as it were. Metabrands is a, a DAO. It's a... It's a very a difficult one to explain what it is, actually. What would be the best way to explain it? Okay, one simple gateway linking portals to different realms within the metaverse with the major utility token. Okay, so yeah, that's the best way to, to sum it up. Um, and you can buy or you can mint these specific uh, NFTs, which allow you to do certain things. And obviously you can vote on proposals etc etc anyway um this is not going to be massively about what meta brands does i'm just going to give you that that brief overview and we're going to look at what they have in their portfolio portfolio is looking quite healthy it's at 1.3 um million dollars um a lot of that is wrapped up in mage tokens so you can take the 1.3 with a pinch of salt. The other tokens that it has that are probably a little bit more liquid are um, GQ, which is the Outer Worlds, which is another NFT project, which these guys have uh, quote unquote partnered with. Uh, BUSD, which is US backed dollars, um, sorry, US dollars backed by Paxos and Binance. Um, Mage, uh, BTC, B, which is BTC on Binance and Ethereum. Um, it gets smaller and smaller, USDC, uh, 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 around through the other wallets that they've got. But those are the main holdings. So we'll come back to these guys a little bit later on. But without any further to do, let's get on with the usual suspects, starting with Dash. And for Dash, we are going to look at the proposal for, well, there's two proposals up. Um, in this cycle which could have had some kind of discussion this one's literally gone up in the last few seconds um and they are the return to national broadcast radio i'm not going to really i'm not even going to touch that one um i don't know i don't i didn't even know broadcast radio was still a thing i'm assuming well not assuming i know that this is like an american thing and it's um it's very niche so i'm not even going to to touch on that one i i didn't vote i just left well enough alone there's we've got bigger fish to fry and this is one of those bigger fish fish proposal for kucoin instant send so um to sum this one up this is a proposal by a community member who has been busy um liaising with kucoin and okx so that they would integrate instant send into their exchanges. Now, instant send allows you to send a Dash transaction in an instant and receive it in an instant. So really it should be called instant receive because sending is always instant. 
Um, okay, so instant receive, as I've now named it, they want to add it to these exchanges so that you can send your dash to the exchange and it arrives instantly. Um, I'm assuming you can send dash from the exchange and it arrives instantly. Um, the, the proposer is asking for, uh, I think it's around 92 dash, which works out to around 5,000. No, it doesn't work out to $5,000. Um, let's see what it does work out to actually. Let's, let's do some maths. Actually, we don't need to do maths. I'm losing my mind. It's right up here in the top. It does it for you. 92-5255. I don't think that's right. I don't think that's right. So each dash is, oh, that is right. Yeah, it's right. So if we do that times 92, the answer is 5,200, okay. I didn't actually need to do that. So he's asking for around $5,000 and he's already done a lot of this work. Now, there's a little bit of confusion in the fact that they were down to one confirmation or even zero confirmation before and they moved it back to 10 confirmations. So now he's requesting for this work to be redone. He launched his proposal after a debate as a pre as a pre-proposal in the forum. Um, this person's English is not their first language, as they say from the beginning. It looks like they're from Spain. Um, where I received feedback and suggestions to work on this project, KuCoin project, and request the salary for two works with exchanges, with a fair salary for these two works, the work uh, being done already and successful to negotiate with OKX Exchange, uh, one of the biggest in Asia, upgrade its confirmation policy to one confirmation for one deposit with Dash, um, and change it from 10 confirmations and for work being done negotiating with KuCoin exchange to change their confirmation policy from 10 confirmations down to one with Dash. Um, the benefit would be to enable instant send and it's already worked with OKX. He cannot promise that he will be able to succeed with KuCoin um, but he's working on it and it seems like he already had it done with KuCoin before, so um, he should be able to do it again. But it's nice that he was honest and he said that he's he's not sure that he, he can be doing it again. Um, the salary just for advising and negotiation 40 dash for OKX, which was already done and in his uh, opinion was the more difficult of the two and to negotiate with KuCoin, which is he feels will be more easy. He's taken a pay cut and only done it for 33 dash. And then there's some small tax compliance, um, which he's also added. Now, um, there's some discussion here. Um, I've put up a proposal, I've put up a proposal, I've put up a comment, um, which has, has since been downvoted. I felt that the price was too high, he probably disagrees. Um, but what I said was I feel the price was too high uh, for what would be negotiations with your contact. I feel like you should offer some more value. Uh, see how you and your contact could work on giving Dash some added visibility within KuCoin and the OKX ecosystems. reason why I say that is because he's almost acting like a business development guy, um, but he's not really developing much business. He's just tackling a small technical issue, um, which is to for the people who have integrated Dash with KuCoin to integrate it fully um, and include one of the two features that make it unique. Um, the difference between one and 10 confirmations isn't likely to be a huge defining factor as to whether or not people trade Dash there. Um, for me personally, if I send any crypto to an exchange, I'm prepared to wait 10 minutes, 15 minutes. It's just, it's just what happens with crypto. I, like, I've just always accepted that. So I don't know if the fact that it's down to one confirmation will make me be like, oh, do you know what? I'm going to use Dash. I don't know. 
Maybe it would, maybe it wouldn't, I don't know. I do feel, however, that I support the underlying basis of this proposal being that community members should seek comp compensation for liaising with exchanges. I feel that on this occasion, you have not provided adequate value. Despite this, I will still be voting yes and supporting you, hoping that future proposals you bring will bring more value and inspire others to take up similar roles with other exchanges and service providers to further the usage of Dash. Um, yeah, that's all pretty self-explanatory. Thank you for your time. Thanks for your answer. Well, the appreciation about the high price or low value, each person has a way of assessing their time. That's fair enough. The time price with 20 years is not the same with 50-year-olds. I have a uh, very appreciation with my time. Okay, so he's saying his time is worth, his time is worth more. Ah, fair enough. $4,000 with 10% variation for a work delivered successfully and another work with future success, I think is cheap. I think it's a fair price with real inflation around 30% and rising. E.g. FYI, that KuCoin can list a coin usually can have a cost from 100,000 or we can have VIP connections. I had to limit the costs, blah, blah, blah. Okay, well, well. Yeah, so KuCoin charge $100,000 to list a coin. I mean, this argument we're going to touch on this in the next um in the next segment and the, the like my response is so what who cares who cares what kucoin decide to charge people who cares who even cares why does it matter oh so you know this is crypto people get fleeced every day uh kucoin they will fleece people every day to charge them a hundred dollars to list on their exchange like they, they literally fleece people every day but it is what it is. Um, this person also said it seems a bit pricey. Okay, so let's go through the the pros and the cons as we always do about this time. So for this one, um, I've got quite a few pros actually. I, I do like this proposal. Um, I like to see that, my first pro is that community, I like to see community members um, it compensated for exchanging with um for liaising with exchanges and i feel like the requested amount is uh low enough to not be burdensome uh the proposal clearly identifies the deliverables although they're not promised so he values his time highly but he doesn't promise that he'll be able to do what he's charging to do um th there's somewhat of a somewhat of a contradiction there like if you're going to charge high, you need to be doing what you're saying you're going to do. Otherwise, charge low. <laughs> um, but high or low, I think is totally subject uh, subjective in this particular um, scenario. Because he might feel it is low. Um, and he, he might be right. He might be right because we don't know what his, we don't know what his skills are. Um, he has completed a lot of the work in advance, and I think that's a massive plus, the fact that he's already went and done it, and then he asks for the money in hindsight. So in hindsight, I've already done half of the task. He says, okay, can I get paid now? I think that's fine. I like that. I like that he's done that. Usually people ask for money before they even start. Um, the cons, um, that he's not promised to complete it. Uh, I, I think that's a bit of a con, usually um that's a bit of a negative factor usually if you say you're going to do something for a certain amount of money you, you do it you don't say i'm I, I, i'm going to try and do it it's not it's not a football match not a sport like the win should be guaranteed by the fact that you're paying for it but um in this scenario i guess you can't really guarantee it but still um lowering the confirmation times is relatively low hanging fruit i feel like he could be doing better things with his links at KuCoin or better things with his links at OKX. Um, my doorbell is ringing. I'm not going to answer that. Uh, questions over the taxation aspect. Now, somebody here did say something about the taxation aspect. They said it a little bit accusingly, I thought. Um, I don't know. The, the thing goes on and on. On and on and on about should he be paying tax or shouldn't he be paying tax. I feel like... If he's left it in his proposal, I feel like it's fine. Once it's in the proposal, um, I don't think it's down to us to micromanage how he pays taxes, whether he pays tax or doesn't pay tax. I think that's um, 
I think that's down to him to worry about. Um, if he's asking for it, then I feel like we shouldn't second guess it. Uh, tax is complicated, and we're not. We don't know what he's paying tax on, not paying tax on, or what he should be paying tax or not be paying tax for. So, I would leave that. Um, and also, there's no discussion uh, about him liaising with any of the other departments within Dash. Is he talking to the business development team? Is he talking to the marketing team? Um, there's no discussion about that. Um, I feel like he would probably be a very good addition to the business development team because this guy's gone out off his own back and he's gotten a uh, an improvement to the services that we're getting from one of the top exchanges. So that's amazing. And sorry for that short pause. <laughs> My child is uh, testing the patience. Anyway, so yeah, so we were saying about this guy not liaising with the other departments. Anyway, let's move on. Um, I'm going to vote yes because I like this proposal. I like what this guy is doing. I like the fact that he's gone and done half of it before he asks for any money. I like the fact that English is not his first language, but he's still put together a very concise and well-worded proposal. I like the fact that he didn't want to scrimp on his time and he pushed back against me saying that his time, that he's charged a bit too much. I like a lot of stuff about this guy and this proposal. So it's going to be a yes from me and all my master nodes. I'm going to wail in onto that one and support that guy. And yeah, well done, good job. Well done. Uh, let's move on. The next proposal is, well, this one's a big one. It's this. It's taken up this much of the PIVX budget, basically. Um, it's massive. It's more than social, design, biz dev and core dev. It's three times the size of core dev. And it's for an integration with now. So... There are two parts to this. First of all, there's the actual proposal, which has gone in, which has only got this, uh, looks a bit too expensive for me, from me. But let's go through what this proposal is. This proposal is by a guy called Jeffrey, a guy who I know relatively well. Obviously, uh, we worked together in PIVX when I was there. Um, I left, I, I think he left for a little while as well, and he's come back. Um, good thing about DAOs is that they are fluid. You can You can come and go as and when you please and uh looks like jeffrey is back jeffrey done a brilliant job before i believe he was support i believe he put forward some really good support proposals and he was a part of that and he made some videos as well um top guy great team member great to work with uh yeah i like him a lot um this proposal however this proposal well let me talk it through 105,000 piv which uh give or take is around $45,000 give or take um yeah yeah give or take it's about 45 about $45,000 now what he wants this for is to um get pivx integrated with this service called Change Now. Excuse me. Now, Change Now is one of these things like uh, Changely. I don't know if it is a rebranding of Changely. Change, oh, sugar. Changely. I don't know if Change Now is a, no, Changely still exists. Okay, so Change Now is just Change Now and it's it's a product similar to this. Oh, let's, let's, let's have a look. So here it is. Here's Change Now. How you can, as you can see, it's very similar to Changely. So it's just one of these products where you put in a certain amount and you put in this and you put in your Bitcoin address and then you'd send the PIVX and they would send you the Bitcoin. It's basically, it's almost like a decentralized exchange, except for the fact that it's centralized 
Um, but it's you don't have to sign up. There's no sign up. It looks like there's no KYC here. Um, so, so yeah, basically that's what this is. Get you onto something like this. Now, he's requesting to do that as well as these other things that we pay $35,000 for change now plus now custody. Now custody holds the crypto for you. Um, it's what companies would need to use. So it's something for e-commerce stores and people like that. Um, there's now wallet and there's now payments. Um, I don't know what now payments is. Now wallet is a wallet. I believe it's like a mobile wallet, which is good, but Judging by the fact that if you've been following along with the show, there's um, Pivx Labs, which I build in my Pivx wallet, which is also a mobile wallet. It makes it makes this a, a little bit less valuable. But this is a, a multi wallet, and often I would argue that a good multi wallet is worth five good uh, dedicated wallets because. Not many people want to install a new wallet for every new coin. If you can have one wallet for all the coins, then you're in a better place. So let's not write off the wallet yet. Anyway, 45000 for those services. Um, $45,000. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 45000 for this proposal. 95000 plus 10% plus 52PVX. So he's got a 10% buffer, 105,000 PIVX. Um, and there's the way you can vote yes, or you can vote no. Now, the interesting part about this proposal, I would say, is all in the pre-proposal. Pre-proposal was presented by someone else, um, a guy called Eric Stanek, who also, obviously, I, I know pretty well. Um, the the numbers are the same, but they're getting a 10% discount on, on what, what I'm just going to call it the fleecing. The numbers are the same, but you're getting ripped off for 10%, 10, 10, 10 grand less, $10,000 less. Um, encourage everyone to read for the entire conversation in the Now Products channel in the Pivx Community Discord. It would be a large amount of effort to summarize it all here. I'm not in the Pivx Community Discord, so I cannot read that. Um, I believe you should summarize it all here anyway, um, because you just should a large amount of effort i believe is what is required to get a forty-five thousand dollar uh proposal passed so it should be summarized here but i believe to some degree we do get it summarized as we go on through the conversation also there is a video from a different crypto project with the change now products team that we may find very helpful too please watch it as well I haven't watched that um let's let's have a look actually we'll see how long it is and we'll we'll see if it's anything longer than 10 minutes i hope that's well okay right so here's a here's a luckily my f computer's on mute well here's a an example of an un well, not, i shouldn't say unreasonable request if you're in a number of DAOs, I don't think you're going to have one hour and 20 minutes to watch through this video. Um, but why not add it? So, yeah, fair enough. Add it. So you, if you do want to watch, um, it's helpful that you can watch there and you can get to, to see the team. I always say proposals that have videos included are are um, better proposals than proposals that don't. So this is a really good thing to add, actually, Eric. Well done. If this project is submitted to the network for master owners to vote on and it passes and funded, I don't see that there is much work at all for our development team. That's true. There would, however, be a lot of opportunities for social and marketing, which is great. Yes, uh, we can. It depends how much you you rate um, this sort of intro, this sort of integration. Um, I think it's a good integration. My my issue is with the price. There are many other perks too, like the opportunity for my Pivx wallet to integrate with the Change Now Exchange API. The exchange from BTC to Pivx directly into my Pivx wallet, yes. Or purchase Pivx using Visa Mastercard while staying in my Pivx wallet, yes. This feature is not 
best for those focused on privacy, but it's important for onboarding new users. Okay, yeah. This is all good stuff. Assuming that Privet price stays at 40 um, cents, I think it's going to go up. That 45k, blah, 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 112,000. It's a complex proposal. Please, please, please review it in detail and provide feedback. Even if you can't vote, you absolutely can complete some due diligence and provide feedback that can affect how a master node owner will vote. Yes. Well said, Eric. I'm not expecting this proposal to be ready for the next super block, but it would be great if it was ready for the following super block in April. And believe it or not, it was ready. This conversation was started at the start of March, so the start of this month. Uh, well, depending on when you're watching this. Thanks in advance for your questions and constructive critique. Okay. Right, so uh, Sean immediately comes in. Well, I say immediately, a day later. Right, so the issue is Pivx is already available on Change Now and their API, and you can swap Pivx in both directions with BTC and many other currencies. This means we can add a, pidget, a, a widget, not a midget, we can add a widget to my Pivx wallet right now and also the Pivx website. Pivx is already listed on Guardian where you can buy Pivx with fiat. You cannot sell Pivx for fiat, but why would the DAO pay $25,000 to list on the partner site where users can already blah 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 i never heard of now wallet until a few weeks ago without having a rough idea of how many users it has i'd say 15k is a lot of money to spend for a wallet listing that has no other benefits to pivx i got a uh wallet listing for a wallet that didn't have very many users and it cost 500 dollars um and i didn't haggle and i know i could have um the thing with these multi wallets is often they want users and they want exposure. If you've got a project with a community the size that Pivx has, it's often you are the prize and not the wallet people. And I would suggest, even in this scenario with this now wallets people who do seem to have a quite a slick website, etc., etc., I would say Pivx are probably still the prize and not them. Um, argue with yourselves about that, by the way. Because I, I don't want to hear any arguments. The now pivot, the now payment integration is an important one, and in my opinion, probably worth the five k fees. It opens up opportunities to e commerce integrations and checkouts with Pivx. That's something we could do with along with upcoming BTC pay server work. Personally, I only see minimal benefits to the proposal, but maybe the now team can provide more information and explain clearly how new integrations will benefit Pivx compared to what we already have the now integrations team did not even enter this conversation they will con they will collect their forty five thousand dollars without lifting a finger because crypto um change now added his feedback in the telegram shane i stand corrected immediately uh concerning about the business already already is partially integrated with service and already available let me explain in more detail in a more technical way, sorry. For the buy side, we just proxy the request to Pivx to one of our liquidity providers, but the in reality, the network is not integrated. So for the sell part, we need to be fully integrated the net, into with the network to support the coin. Hope it is clear now. Okay. Um, yeah, well, I, well, okay. And with Sean still, um, we don't need this extra stuff. Not for $45,000 anyway, 25 or whatever. We are extremely happy to increase the number of users from Hong Kong prior to local crypto regulations uh, against the backdrop of positive dynamics change that's preparing to obtain a trading license from the SFC. And this is, uh, this is taken from the prime crypto 2017 playbook. When you tell people in English, that this particular project is doing amazingly in China and nobody can go there and verify it. And, you know, you put some Chinese stuff at the top and we don't even know what that says. We don't know what it says. It could say anything. Say, Pivx are a bunch of idiots. We don't know. I guess we could translate. Let's translate this. Oh, what have you done? Oh, it's taking me directly to the tweet. I'm going to translate. Let's translate and see what that says at the top. Let's see if it says, hey, you suckers. Whoop, whoop, paste. Nice. Right. Hello, crypto enthusiasts from Hong Kong. It's not, no, 
nowhere near as insulting as I'd hoped. It was far more work, but after reading through the Telegram chat, I found these various points. That, uh, no, the Coins B has said that as long as PIVX gets added to now payments, they can accept PIVX for payment for gift card. Who's Coins B? So I'm going through this literally as I would when I'm doing my uh, research. Um, this is how I would assess a proposal. Um, you click coins being brief bit refill comes up first so this is coins b i guess this is a bit refill um rival yeah mobile phone top up supported cryptocurrencies uh blah 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 view all i wonder if we're there already no it looks like we're not i can't see pivx there if you see pivx shout no it's not there there are some there are some dinosaurs there though i don't i just saw populous oh my gosh yeah oh temporary disabled <laughs> no shit <laughs> okay um so oh dash is there all right uh buy gift cards i wonder if you can just buy visa i wonder if you can just buy a visa gift card that would be out of stock This might be interesting. Oh, that that is interesting. So this is this is really oh provider has to verify your identity once after redeeming the code. Okay. Okay. We're getting we're getting distracted. Um and this is taking and this is taking too long way too long okay so anyway yada 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 it goes on i'm just going to go through the pros and the cons of the proposal um it's good to, this is i would like to be on as many of these things as possible um getting added to these places where you can swap is good we're already added to the place where you can swap the problem with the uh, custodial part um which is good for the e-commerce is it's kind of like a chicken and egg where are these e-commerce places they say that they've got over 3000 and this that and the other but you know like they won't they won't list them they won't list them anywhere so i don't believe that they have 3000 merchants ready to accept crypto and all this that and the other i don't believe that's a thing i think if that was the case they would list every single one of them on their website because that would increase the amount of traffic that those websites would get i would go to the website and i would say which websites can i use and if i see any that i use a rival website and pay with a different coin i would now go there and pay with my pivx or my bitcoin or my dash or whatever um here's some information provided by flow 11 who's i looked at one of his uh, proposals maybe a few weeks ago or maybe not actually on this video actually maybe just privately um, interesting new guy who's come along and he's providing a, quite a lot of value actually um, he's come through and he's given a lot of the uh, analytics for the site a lot of videos a, a lot of views sorry at change now that's nice i like to see that um, wallet now a lot of views as well now payments a lot of visits um, even guardian has a lot of visits these are good stats um green definitely good orange definitely potential red no interaction yet not interested yet so green yeah definitely good and that's true um follow up cost so guardian is not included 500 2000 well, it's a good question that we should ask um da, 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 da. okay so let's wrap this one up and move on um the pros of the proposal is that it's broken down nicely there was a lot of pre-proposal discussion that happened a lot of interaction from both jeffrey and eric and also even from the now payments team uh via telegram which they probably use more um because they're, they're probably just that from that generation 2017 crypto guys i i i think that the the integration is a, a good 
a good thing, definitely. Um, you can never have enough of these things. The bad thing, I think, is the price. I think the price, for me, makes it a non-starter. It's It just dwarfs everything else that has ever gone on. And when you look at the current votes, it's massively in favour. But I think there's only a few hands that are, that are pushing that. Um, it's one of the issues you, you get with DAOs, as usual, is like a, a few hands push in one way or the other. Um, and there's only been the one vote. I haven't voted yet. I'm going to vote no. But there's only been the one vote that's against it. Um, suspiciously equal to the biz dev proposal, which has also been put forward by the same person, Jeffrey. So, so yeah, the, propo the, the pros are that I think it is something that is, um, it would help PIVX. The cons are that the price is too high the cons outweigh the pros because just because of the price, purely because of the price alone, I think the price is too much. Um, I don't think you would get this past with Dash. I think if you tried to put this into the Dash guys, I think they'd rip it to shreds and it would, I think you'd, you'd get, you, 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 it'd get ripped to shreds. There's, they wouldn't, they wouldn't have it. They wouldn't have it. Um, and, Dash have got a much bigger budget. And Dash wouldn't pay 45 grand to go into now payments. No way. Um, onwards and upwards. Evmos. Let's go into the Evmos proposal, which is for the 12.1.0 upgrade. Now, there's two of these. There's another one, which was a few days before, which was a 12.0.0 upgrade which looked like it done the exact same thing, but for some reason, I think they've actually uh, labeled the upgrade incorrectly. Um, judging by something I saw in the chat, I think they labeled it incorrectly, so they had to put this through. And the fact that they started this one before that one had even finished. Um, I don't know if they're doing this... Uh, semantic version in i don't know if that is so with that the the 12 would be like a like a massive version change like a massive deal like um potentially breaks older versions like that much of a big deal um the one would be a a decent size change a big change like a big improvement um i i've I guess they are doing that sort of semantic version in because the upgrades that are listed in here are quite big upgrades. Like if it was a 1.1 and they are using semantic version, but I don't know what version they're using to be honest with you, but I'm just assuming um, there would just be bugs, small improvements, refactors that would, that, that would be in this, this particular column. Anyway, they're moving up to 12.1.0. Um, this passed with flying colours. There wasn't anything else really going on. Evmos is, I don't want to say dying a death, but two weeks ago, I followed up on a proposal. There's been nothing in the meantime. They raised the, the cost to put forward a proposal. Um, we could look into the pre-proposals, but to be honest with you, the pre-proposals, uh, uh, a percentage of them should become real proposals and not enough is happening on the Evmos main net. This is worrying. Um, this I don't like to see. And this was one of the reasons why I wasn't really happy with the whole, we've got a foundation, we've got this, we've got that, because what it seems like is happening is that the only people that are putting forward proposals are formal quote unquote team members and you're going to end up with an echo chamber. You're going to end up with a small get along gang. The two previously dissenting voices have gone. They they got they got ran out of town. And now it's not particularly that I'm looking for dissenting voices, but maybe alternative voices. Maybe people doing alternative things. Maybe people that their face doesn't fit with the the incumbent teams that are uh, holding all the power. Um, there was a proposal which got voted down, which I can't even see now about the 
support team uh, should be here. Nope. Community owned decks. That's decent. Yeah, here we go. Support team that was rejected. Um, I would have. I don't know if that's a sign. You know, like new teams getting rejected and no new proposals. Well, no proposals from new people. It's, it's not a good sign. Anyway, the upgrade. Um, obviously, it's it's mostly positive. I'm very happy that the they grant the full amount of airdrop tokens to users affected by an airdrop um, that with the early decay bug. I don't know if I was affected by that. I did get an airdrop. Um, I can't remember how much it was now, to be honest with you. I, I bought after that anyway um, for my sins. Well, actually, no, I've done quite well on FMOS, to be honest. Not financial advice. Um, there was one line here which I didn't really understand. Restrict EVM module to work only on the FMOS chain. Let's do the pros and cons. The pros, this is nice and concise, nice and short. You can sit down, you can get through this in five, ten minutes. If you're familiar with what's going on in FMOS, or more familiar than me, you're going to understand all these things. If you're very technically minded, you're going to know what this means. I don't know what it means. Well, not only technically minded, but if you if you're into Ethereum, you're going to know what this means. Um, I don't know what EIP seven twelve is, but I like the fact that they are keeping up with Ethereum and the um, and the added features that do make sense for them. So that's important. Um, Upgrade in Tendermint and Cosmos SDK. That's also important. So they're keeping up to, to speed with the other two, the other two, uh, let's say, mummy and daddy change that Evmos is is a, a child of. It's a child of uh, Cosmos and Tendermint and it's a child of Ethereum. Like, that's the baby. When you blend the two, you get Evmos. Um, the core creator end to end testing suite that performs the software upgrade locally. Nah, da, 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 and they're ready to do the upgrade okay perfect lovely and there's this lovely guide and you can also go into commonwealth where i went uh one of the cons which is not even a con of this proposal but one of the negative points was that this proposal was published well over a week ago um and there's there's no comments no nobody's nobody's holding these guys to 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 account for anything is that because everything is pretty uh, sewn up there's not really that much i guess there's only me who doesn't quite understand something in particular that would go and ask i don't know where the pre-proposal discussion is but there might have been more discussions there um there's a full change log can be found here i don't know if it's going to take me to github it is um oh here we go right so here we so this is why it's gone to a one because there are state state machine breaking upgrades uh api breaking upgrades and improvements so this is interesting so if you're building on evmos some of this may actually matter to you uh, especially as api breaking stuff may actually matter to you so this is nice well done well laid out they included everything they they linked to everything they've been working on it uh, for a while they released it uh, at least a week before they've pushed it um is there any issues nope not that we can see not any not any new ones so looks like all is well and good and obviously i didn't vote on this one actually i didn't care and it felt like it didn't need my my help the, the decision was was well and truly done also i don't feel like i'm qualified to ask these guys or tell these guys what to do um everyone is a quite a, a a quite a complex beast so you know that's the reason why there's so few no votes. I can't can't really imagine why someone would vote no. But for that, I'm going to also be voting yes. Um, any negative drawbacks? I just would have liked to see maybe a little bit more discussion around it. But I guess if I really wanted to see discussion, I would have to go to the pre-proposal. I'd have to look further. And I didn't. And I don't think there is much to discuss here anyway. Because there's a lot of just um, keeping up with the Joneses going on here. And fixing the airdrop and uh, small improvements and refactors. There's a full change log though, so, which you can check out. Finally, the main event. Oh, do you know what we didn't actually touch on? Alternatives to to the now product integration are things like these DEXs. So I'm just going to quickly touch on two DEXs. 
that could have could be used by projects like PIVX or, or your own or your own DAO. One is Sorridex, which um, they're planning to do Monero, Ethereum and Bitcoin. If they're doing Bitcoin, it'll be quite easy to do Dash and quite easy to do PIVX because those in the know know that Bitcoin is um, a very uh, similar model to Dash and then subsequently PIVX, um, Ethereum and Monero are very different in the way that they handle transactions and uh, signatures etc etc uh the other one is maya which is a, a fork of four chain um maya are we spoke about them last uh, last video they're integrating dash all of that is already been done and it's um it's another option for people to use so for the final For the final project that we're going to look at, let's go and look at Metabrands. So this proposal is to DCA into Axes and X2Y2. Um, it was brought forward by a guy called Moto Lori, and he's an arc mage. Now, what he wants to do is to discuss the strategy during these marking conditions for the DAO to buy more of the assets that they already ho own being AXS and to buy some X2Y2. I don't think they own any X2Y2 yet. Um, X2 Axie is Axie Infinity. So Axie Infinity is a game which most people should be aware of one of the leading games in the nft game space so the meta brands dow actually owns a bunch of axie infinity and x2y2 is a uh nft marketplace similar to a open sea or a looks rare so you can buy and sell your nfts on there um what the proposal is saying is there are different options either we can double our current standing in both axes and x2y2 i didn't know that they had any x2y2 and looking at this they don't have any x2y2 so i don't know where the x2y2 is being hold, held but looking at this they don't have any axie either um so they could double their axie and double their x2y2 Option two is to acquire $40,000 worth of Axie only, so not to increase their X2Y2, and uh, using funds from the last proposal. And they would say that their minimum exit point is $40 at Axie and $0.13 cents for X2Y2. Axie is currently at $8, so it'd be a 5X, and X2Y2 is at about 6 cents so that'd be a 2x um x2y2 is also only 12 million dollars so a 2x on x2y2 is not out of the bounds of reality um x2y2's all-time high is at four dollars so going to 13 cents would still be a long way below that uh the fourth option or oh, the third option was to acquire x2y2 only using funds from the last proposal uh the minimum exit point being 13 cents and the fourth option which was the one that i actually leaned towards the most which obviously was the least popular one was to sell some gq tokens at the current market price and dca into axie and x2y2 uh, gq is another project called the outer ring which has been performing quite well over the last uh 30 days 8% terribly over the last year down 90% um i don't i don't like the the chances of projects coming back for two cycles so i would cut my losses at this point and sell the gq um i discussed this in discord with uh one of the one of the community members i don't know if it was this this person or not and they said, no, they don't want to sell the GQ cheap. Uh, option number five is no action. Reject the proposal and do nothing. Um, timeline is Im effective immediately. Um, and it's literally just finished, finished this morning. 
and the uh, the winning option was option one, which is to double their current standing in both Axie and X2, Y2. That means that the, the DAO is now a bigger holder of Axie and will be a bigger holder of X2, Y2. Uh, this proposal, pros and cons. Pros, I love that all of the strategies are laid out. Um, I would like maybe a little bit more information as to why they feel we should be buying more Axie, why they feel we should be buying more X2, Y2. Maybe just saying we feel Axie will go up in the medium to long term because of X, Y and Z. Or we believe X2, Y2 will go up in the medium to long term because of X, Y and Z. Option number two um, or the cons of this proposal, I feel I, I feel like finding the cons to this proposal is difficult because it's it's well laid out and it's really down to what uh people would decide to do. The only way I feel this might be improved, and it's not really a major deal, is if they had some kind of uh video or audio call around this particular proposal and they had different people discuss their points of view um as to what they wanted to do and why and that didn't happen obviously um but i feel like that would have been nice it would have been good for community engagement and it would have been probably good for this proposal and for people who are voting they could hear people's opinions on axie x2 y2 and um gq but i've said enough on this proposal as i said i voted for number four and I was well behind number one. Well, no, I wasn't well behind. I wanted to buy X2, Y2 and Axie, but I wanted to sell GQ. So I was kind of behind. Um, I would have gone for number one. I feel like number four should have probably got more options. Uh, you would have gone for number two? Okay. Um, thanks for watching this far. And um, thank you to my glamorous assistant for coming and helping and showing his face. I'm sure you all really wanted to see him not really um and please like and subscribe and comment and share um to summarize we voted for number four on this one but we got almost got our wish we didn't sell gq but we did double our position in axie uh on evmos it was quite a simple straightforward one just a network upgrade nothing really to see here but there is a noticeable a noticeable decline in the activity on the Evmos DAO. Uh, Pivex, it looks like this one's going to win. It looks like it's because of a few heavy-handed individuals. Um, it's a proposal I would definitely vote no on, um, but it looks like it's going to win anyway. It's, I think, far too much money for what's being offered, although what's being offered is of use. And finally... Uh, Dash, which I really like this proposal. I voted yes on it. Um, I would have, I would have probably tried to squeeze, let uh, this this man's time for slightly less money. But I appreciate what he's done, and I really like it. So I would have voted yes on that. So it's a a yes, a no, a yes, and then a uh, I missed the target just. Thanks very much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you on episode thirteen. Like, subscribe, and share. Twice. Twice. Well, more, probably more than twice. How many times? Twelve. Twelve times. Share it twelve times. Otherwise, we're coming for you. Yeah, and there'll be a tranche there on your face and you'll get bad luck for the rest of your life. Alright, do a scary face. <laughs>